Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate how to use the laser designation on the A10 wipeout, which is the Arma 3 version of just the A10 Warthog. Um, we're going to, um, or what you have done is we've placed some um, anti air ZSUs in this area here. So let's have a look at them. All active, all manned, all fairly, uh, all fairly nasty looking, to be honest with you. Um, four of those in a, in a close area, and should we put a CSAT one down as well? Uh, Anti-air Tigris, uh, let's pop it down here right in the middle. Okay, brilliant. So what we're going to do is we're just going to show you how to take care of all of these items. Okay, so let's load into game. So I don't fly this typically, you know, balls to the wall. I like to be a little bit more measured. You know, if you think of your um, your king of the hill style of gameplay where you just like go all out, I'm a little bit more kind of standoffish. I like to do things from a distance, from a nice safe distance where I'm actually not putting myself on my... Uh, of anybody who's on board my vehicle, should I uh, be carrying a transport vehicle or whatever, I don't want to put anybody in risk. And that includes myself as well. So, what have we got on board weapon wise? We have the cannon, we're going to use the laser marker, we've got some Mavericks, uh, four GBUs which we're going to use all of those and we've got some Vickers as well. And that's all of our weapons. So we're going to climb to approximately uh, 2500 meters, um, cruise at about 500 miles an hour and then we're going to take care of the enemy. Just for convenience sake, I'm just going to put a marker on the map, just so I know if I do end up flying off the map, which I most likely will, um, in the wrong general direction I want to be heading. I also want to change um, the uh, sensor as well. I'm going to stick it to 8 kilometers, and then I'll be able to see what's happening with that sensor as well. If I just want to put a big map on as well, just see what's going on there. Okay, let's do this. One ninety. Let's pull that nose up uh, about fifteen degrees. We'll pull that gear up now. Speed's climbing, altitude's climbing, 12 kilometres away. We're in a fairly nice stable climb for the moment. I'm just going to change my equipment now to laser marker. That's going to be the first thing that I use. As you can see, we're currently at 100% throttle and climbing. That's perfectly fine. And we've got a nice rate of climb. So I'm just going to start to turn the aircraft into this climb and just maintain our airspeed just still ever so slightly climbing in airspeed as well which is good let's get our eye on where we need to be over there superb so I'm going to try and demonstrate here long distance bombing so that means you know at least two kilometers with a GBU at least with maybe at least two kilometers in altitude as well at least but first what we want to do is to be able to designate our targets and then drop our GBUs so we're going to head in that direction and we're going to maintain our climb I'm going to stick it on about 10 degrees which is a nice comfortable speed there we're still climbing it's still comfortable in fact let's go five degrees because it's a bit aggressive now okay brilliant 12 kilometers out super there's our laser camera or our pod so we're going to zoom in with our pod and we're just going to lock into that area at the moment until we begin to see stuff with the camera we're still quite a way out, we're 10 kilometres out, so it's perfectly fine, it's not abnormal to be seeing this. We're now at 2,500 metres. Have we got any vehicles in sight now? None at the moment. 
We also have thermal camera. Have we got anything yet on thermal? Oh, we got one vehicle there. Oh, there we go. Here's one. So we're going to designate that. And then we're going to target that one as well. GBU. I don't think we're going to be able to get to drop that before we um, we pass it by. Oh, There you go, evasive action taken. We had enough distance between us and that in order. Oh, second one coming in. Oh, he's a determined fella, I'll give him that. I am now all out of um, flares, so if ever this is going to evidence the success of long range bomb dropping, this will be it. So we're going to climb, we're 6.5 kilometres away. We're going to continue climbing for the moment. And we are going to head towards the lion's den. Boom, missile away. Currently 2,000 metres high and currently 4 kilometres away. So that's the one that's causing us the most grief at this time. It's 4 kilometres away. We've now lost radar lock. I'm now going to go into first person view. And just look to maintain readiness for an evasive action. Boom. That was dropped from four kilometers away at over 2,000 meters. You know, in essence, that's the end of this video. I don't need to show you really anything else. I've succeeded in showing you what I wanted to show you. Four kilometers, folks. Anyway, but any, let's continue with this. Let's do this again. Let's repeat that exercise. There is another one. It's now designated. Okay. We're just going to... Rotate the aircraft around. Well, we're not doing any strange manoeuvres here. There we go. Okay, we're balanced. We've got a nice bit of airspeed going on there. Okay, six kilometres. Five kilometres. Laser, there you go. So right on five kilometres, we f dropped our bomb. I'm not sure that's actually going to hit at five kilometres. I've never actually hit one at five kilometres. Um, our altitude is 2,600 metres. Um, I think it might be a little bit short. Who knows? Um, let's see. This one, I think, is just going to be a little tiny bit off. If it hits on target, I'll be very surprised. Oh, and it did as well. Five kilometres, goodness me. I'll have, I must admit, I've never had one at five kilometres before. Um, not in harm's way. Oh, there's another one if I just zoom in. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. 
Let's do it again. So we're going to swing our jet around. Let's roll it over there. Let's see. Expedite the turn. That's it. Let's point in the general direction. 6.5 kilometres now. We're locked. Bombs away, bombs away. And now we just watch. We've lost that lock now from that distance and this altitude, but the lower we are and the closer we are to it, then, you know, we would um, still get a lock further down. And you could actually also just point the nose down to the ground, aim at it and drop and it would be perfectly fine. Um, but we're not going to do that, guys. We're just going to um, just switch camera just to see this one explode regularly in regular camera mode. And there you go. What was that, about six kilometres? That's not too bad, that's a success. We've seen the crew, you can just see the crew now have disembarked from the vehicle. How do we disembark when that bomb's dropped on them? I've got no idea, but there you go. Okay, have we got any more? I know we've got at least one more in the area, haven't we? Um... And there we go. Superb. Okay, we can just do a combat rollover. That's about nine kilometres away. We're not going to get it from nine kilometres away, surely. 3,500 metres, I doubt it. As soon as it locks, though, I'm going to fire this GBU. It's our last GBU. Oof, that was close. Uh, what are we at? 3,500, and that was above six kilometres. If this lands, it'll be an absolute miracle. I'm just going to zoom out. I absolutely doubt that it's going to happen at all. That's too far. Is it? I actually pushed my own demonstration here too far to one way oh my goodness me so uh, it's a bit of a stretched goal really for me to expect that um, those first or oh, those last few bombs were going to hit at all I've just been cheeky more than anything about what is possible but you know essentially you could release those GBUs maintain your distance while they landed uh, and if anything that just goes to prove a theory that you can drop them and maintain a safe distance from um, anti-air assets um, keeping everybody safe, uh, high, well away from danger. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, what's this one? Have we taken care of this one? Yeah, we have. One, two, three. Any more? I honestly don't know. Where are we? We're off the map, that's for sure. Right, let's swing it around. Stalling at 400 miles an hour, really? Right, so we're at 3,500. use a vicar for the one that we're going to target. There we go. So we're designating one now. I'm just going to mark target here now. There you go. Ready. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, it's not going to have that one, is it? 
to not having it at all. Highly unlikely, it's too high up. But what we'll do is we'll use the cannon and have some fun with it. Gonna bring the flaps in for this one. And what we'll do is we'll do a combat turn. I could have sprayed him with bullets, but I thought we got Vickers. Why not? Okay, so that concludes how to use the GBUs and the lasers when a target is being designated. And that doesn't just apply to being designated by your vehicle. It can be being designated by anybody from anywhere. As long as something's being designated and you're in a vehicle which can identify and pick up on that designation, then anybody in a you know in the um, in a vehicle with GBUs or missiles or whatever, and it can accept that kind of designation, go ahead and do it. Interestingly, if you're using AI gunner and the Comanche and you're piloting it, uh, you can select the AI gunner to actually target the laser designation, which is really really good, especially because laser designating um, AI gunners are really 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 rubbish at picking off targets unless the laser designated. So just a bit of advice there. Um, other than that, it's um, time for us to go back to Friendly Airfield. And get some cup of tea with chaps. There we go.